Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming in KSP 1.0. The much hyped version is finally here and as you can see the great launch effects as I launch off the pad with this rocket that sort of looks like a miniature SLS. So uh, today, I've been waiting for 1.0 to make this video, I am going to be starting a new series. So uh, I was initially going to do a career and I probably will still do that, but I thought it would be a little boring to start out, so what I'm going to do, at least for now, is uh, just a persistent world. And so I'm going to be launching rockets, building sh standardized ships, exploring the solar system in a persistent save, building stations. It'll be kind of like career mode in sandbox. So uh, yeah, look for that. This is the first video of that. And uh, you can see I'm launching with the new aerodynamics model from 1.0. 1.0 is an amazing update. I'm loving it so far. It's it's really fun. And uh, so right now, the new aerodynamics, you can see a uh, solid rocket booster separation. And uh, I've flipped many rockets doing this so far, but it does mean that if your craft is aerodynamic, you'll get to orbit with much less delta V. I mean, assuming you don't flip the rocket. This one had a lot of wobble. I uh, What I'm launching today is, well, I'm calling it the CTV-4. So crew transport vehicle, and then four signifies the four en en engines it uses on its uh, service module once in space. And uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the uh, Boeing commercial crew CST-100 uh, spacecraft they're developing for transport to the station, and that's kind of where I got inspired for this. And it has four engines on the back. I believe the Boeing has five. but <laughs> And uh, it also makes use of the new service compartments which is an awesome update it's it's basically uh, 2.5 meters and 1.25 meter parts you stick them on your ship and they're like uh, they're like the cargo bays for planes but they're small and they're round so they work on a, a uh, they work on just a normal rocket and you can use them to store solar panels monopropellant most of the standard standardized versions of the ship are going to be carrying supplies in there like monopropellant, uh, yeah, power generation batteries. This one was testing deploying a small like extremely basic satellite just a hex core with the two panels on it and you'll see that later in the video. Right now we have separation from the main booster and uh, we'll be circularizing the orbit with the Poodle engine. The Poodle is one of the engines that was kind of nerfed with this update along with the LV909 uh, It's called the Terrier now. Both of these engines have an ISP of 85 at sea level. Yes, I said 85, not 385, 85. Do not use them on the first stage of a rocket, and not that people really did anyway, but the point is don't use them in the atmosphere at all. They will not really work, and since atmosphere now causes your thrust to go down as well, it's basically a bad idea to use them. In space, though, they're still quite good, although I do believe they got their thrust nerfed a bit, although I could be wrong on that. Anyway, the uh, CTV-4 contains a service bay which can be used either for very small satellite deployment or a service compartment. It's got a small fuel tank, four little Rockomax engines on the back. I forgot what they're called now because they have names, but I'll get back to you on that. It's a three Kerbal pod with a docking port, two parachutes, heat shield for re-entry. Uh, newer versions might allow the heat shield to cover up the service module as well, service compartment, so for re-entry in that. And uh, the plan is to use this ship as a stepping stone to dock to stations, and I'm also planning to send it on a Duna orbiting mission with a heat shield. So look forward to that on this save. And uh, yeah, this is kind of just an introduction video, introduction to the series, still trying out KSP 1.0, still crashing rockets in the atmosphere. But uh, expect many things on this save. I'll be probably starting with a low carbon orbit space station. Moving on to lunar and Minmus space stations eventually, uh, I will be advancing the design of the CTV-4 and uh, eventually allowing that. I'm planning to add a second docking port so that it can go on interplanetary missions. One of my longer term goals is to harness the Dress droids, which are new in 1.0. They're asteroids that spawn in orbit around Dress. Harness those to create orbital fuel bases around Dress, along with surface bases, with, uh, all of which will have refineries. It will serve as a stepping stone to go to the outer planets Elu and Jewel. And, uh, yeah, there's just a lot to do now, and uh, very glad this update came out. 
and uh, in the video right now you'll see I'm just getting the orbit a little circularized making sure it's not too close to the atmosphere because we do want a fairly normal orbit and uh, you will be able to get a good view of the CTV4 right now as we detach this separator so there we go as you can see a very small fuel tank there's a heat shield under that fairing and uh, that large block in the middle is the service compartment which is an awesome part it's also actually more heat resistant than the mark one pod which means it's meant for re-entering if you re-enter from low carbon orbit with a parachute you will likely not need a heat shield on that because the compartment will do it for you you can notice the four engines on the back so it's a pretty interesting flat design, I think, and uh, it should serve me well. It will be used for, again, small satellite deployment, transfer to and from the stations, and uh, it should be able to go to the moon, although I haven't tested that yet. This is the first iteration I will be advancing this design. I also want to change the launch vehicle so that it no longer has to use solid rocket boosters because those can get in the way. Here we have the satellite deployment. I forgot to add RCS in this design, so I'll be adding that in the next one, and we won't have that issue anymore. And again, thanks for watching. Uh, I know this video might have been a little bland, but they will be much more interesting coming up. And uh, I'll see you next time on KSP 1.0 Sandbox. Thanks.